Okay, this is going to be chapter 7. We're barely going to touch on it at all today. Sorry, we're not going to get far into it at all. But we're going to start. Y'all know what data mining is? Anybody? It's basically taking data and getting stuff out of it. Okay? Have you ever gone to Amazon and bought something? And hey, you want to buy this as well? You ever seen that? I, I did the website for uh, Synergy Datacom. It used to be called Radio Supply down on Classen and 4th maybe. They sell all the networking equipment. I originally wrote their website, one of the first ones. And they wanted the ability that if you're buying a cable, like a network cable, hey, do you want to get a jack to go with it? You know, a network end. So it's been out for a long time, but it's getting more and more popular. Um, one thing I like about it, sometimes you buy something and they say, hey, you know what, you want this to go with it. Which is handy. Has anyone ever purchased something when they recommend it? I have. Many a times. Um, some things I don't like about it. It remembers, like Amazon remembers what you looked at. And it's like, you know, I'm done with that project. You don't need to keep showing me, like, I was looking up the cost of doing my own chain link fence. And I was checking out the prices of all the different components, and I was going to go compare it at Lowe's, see what's the shaper. But then for the longest time, they kept showing me chain link fence. It's like, dude, the fence is installed. The project's done with. It's like, stop reminding me. Of... Now you can. You can go in and clear your browsing, your browsing history in Amazon. Not just in your browser, but actually in Amazon itself. Because Amazon was one of the first. They kind of stored it on their end. So no matter which computer you logged in with, you could still see it. A lot of times they'll store it on the local PC, but Amazon was storing it on their end. But now they have the ability to clear that, which if you've never done that, it's just go to account, clear browsing history, done. Super easy. Because that chain link fence is like, why? I'm not building a fence anymore. You know? So, could be issues. Um, but data mining is actually using data. We have tons and tons of data out there. I'm watching a show called uh, Person of Interest. Anyone seen that? Okay. I'm at the end of season two right now. But that's basically what it is. They're, they capture everything everybody does and find links. Yeah, it's very far-fetched. But the fact that there's a lot of data out there on us is something. Okay? I got a call. It was either Friday or this weekend from University of Maryland. That was my very first degree back in 90... 91? No? Maybe 90, 91, something like that. He's so, like, hi, Ken, this is so-and-so from University of Maryland. I knew he was reading his trip. He goes, so how's your degree in general studies doing for you now? I'm like, good reading off that script there, dude. Are you using it? I'm like, well, technically, no. But it was, but the point is they have data on you. But I was just surprised that after all these years, that's the first call I've ever gotten from them. It's like, what, did you, like, pull a really old database from somewhere? And But people do that because they make money from that. And believe it or not, a lot of people can't say no. Okay, that's a big, you know, we went August 2011, Rose State became non-smoking. I don't know if y'all know that. Okay. I still remember as soon as they did, kids were still smoking. Because they didn't know. And right outside our building, we got a little, we have our parties or picnics out there. It's like an enclosed area. Well, students would go to the corner of that thing, sit down there and smoke. And I went out there one day, and I saw one. I'm like, hey. Non-smoking campus means entire campus. And then one of the other people said, oh, so glad you did that. I just couldn't tell him. I'm like, what do you mean you couldn't tell him? You should tell him, okay? But so the point is we're saving everything nowadays, okay? Okay. And now more people are starting to use it. More people are starting to, hey, you know, we have this data. We have this capability, so why don't we do something with it? That's kind of what this is about. And one of the... Probably one of the, the biggest things about Python is the ability to do this. Take large amounts of data and do something with it. Okay? Because, I mean, uh, is, uh, Isabel Billen works downstairs. Like, if you came in this end of the building, it's like the second door. It's called institutional research. We actually just got notified as one of, not notified, recognized as one of three schools that are doing the most to help students graduate. One way they're doing it is they're looking over student records and saying, hey, Chris, you're one class shy of graduating. Why didn't you take that one class? Believe it or not, we have a lot of people 
that stopped going to school, yet they're so close. They don't, they're like, oh, I was one class away, I didn't know that, then they were on finish. So it actually, it helps students, it helps us. So what we're doing is we're using that data to look, and now we can query and say, hey, based on the current degree program, what is Chris missing to graduate? And we can make an individualized plan for you, and it works good. So uh, that's, that's what this chapter is all about. That's what Python's really, really good at, okay? So here this is, this is a statistical technique to help us process and summarize large amounts of data. Okay, can you think of anything that has large amounts of data? Cell phones. Can you think of the cell phone calls out there? I mean, I, I love seeing it on TV. You know, they can instantly query and see every tower you're connected to and find out where you're You know, that's real life stuff, though. Because Dr. Schnoy uh, from the University of Tulsa gave, Tulsa gave us a presentation. He had a guy there from England that they use this stuff all the time. They use it to track criminals. They'll find, you know, something happened and they look under their database of numbers of known criminals and then they'll track the cell towers. They can actually triangulate to within a few hundred feet of where the person is. Then they'll just walk up and arrest them. So, so they're using large amounts of data from the cell phone towers to solve crimes. So if you ever think you're hiding from somebody, I guess if you take your battery out of your phone, you might be. But that's about it, okay? All right, here they have um, earthquakes. And speaking of that, your next project is a very large, well, that's going to not, not be very helpful, is it? Let's go with this one. Okay, your next project is going to include doing something like that. I downloaded every earthquake we've had in Oklahoma in 2014. Okay, now if I was to ask Chris a question, say, Chris, could you tell me how many magnitude 5.2 earthquakes were there centered around Oklahoma City? Without data mining or some sort of collection, can you imagine looking through this file? That would suck. It, it would take forever. Okay, and um, in a cryptography course, computer security, I have them do that. Where they had to calculate the uh, index of coincidence. They had to count the number of A's and the number of B's. And Cameron, how many letters were in that file you had to do? Was it like 4,000 or something? Lots. And people literally count it by hand. No, no, no. There comes a time in life that you need to automate the process. So your program is going to be based on this data. Okay? I just haven't got it finished yet. So that's what just so you have a general idea of what it's going to be. It's going to be analyzing earthquake data. Okay. Hopefully I'll have it done by Wednesday, but I want to make sure I get it working right before I sign it to you. So that's, at least now you got a, a slight glimpse of what it's going to be. So they're talking about here, there's a large amount of data can be overwhelming. You know, and you know, here's some data from, uh, this, is this earthquakes? Um, no, it's not earthquakes. Earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters. Okay. I don't know if this might be earthquakes. It can't be. There's no way it's a 201.7 earthquake. Is it flood? They don't, a portion of the large data file shown here. Yes, yeah, it represents all the earthquakes that took place around the world in a two-week period. So I have no idea. What's this 37.3 mean then? I don't know. But... You could see how it could be very overwhelming trying to analyze large amounts of data like I showed you. Okay, so each line is one earthquake. Okay. Each line consists of seven fields. Okay, there they tell us our in order of left to right magnitude, day, time of day, lunch, latitude, longitude, depth. That's what it is. It's depth. This is the depth of the earthquake. Okay. All right, but we can very easily write a program. We could convert this into a dictionary, then we could have the keys and the values, kind of like you did for the frequency analysis chart. Remember, we kept track of the strings and how many times the strings did. So it's along the same lines. Right? So if you don't remember how to do that, it might be beneficial to pull up that program we did with that, because you're gonna it's gonna be along the same lines. I'm just not done with it yet. Okay, and that's what they say it's along the same lines of chapter four. Okay. Um, 
Now I'm going to start talking about cluster analysis. I'm not going to make you do cluster analysis, but I still want to talk about it because it is kind of important. Okay? So my technique to attempt to divide the data into regions or clusters. Can okay, I show you a picture here in a second? Okay. Yeah. With cluster, actually, let's get down to the picture. So say we have all of our exams and our homework here. Okay. Anyone see any clusters? Any grouping of data? Okay. I'd say top right's got a big grouping. Bottom left's got a big grouping. Is there any other groupings? bottom right we have a grouping. So what could that mean to us? So without cluster analysis, I mean that's just a bunch of dots on the screen. Can we infer anything? Can we come up to any decisions or any conclusions based on that? Probably not. But once we start looking at it we can say, hey, you know what? There are groupings of data here. Okay? So we have a grouping, group B, bottom left hand corner. Now, reading the chart, so we have the exam percentage and homework percentage. So what is group B telling us? Those who scored low on an exam also scored low on homework. You see that? Everybody see how we're reading that? So group A, those who scored high on an exam scored high on homework. Now, there's always those outliers, like there's a dot here. What do you think that one could mean? He's pretty high on the exam, but very bad on homework. Could be like my stepson. He doesn't like doing homework, but he's great in math. Or he could have stolen the exam from someone. You don't know. I mean, because anyway, he does no homework, yet all of a sudden he gets a good grade on the exam. You don't. I'm sorry. I just, I had, what? But then he does good on the test. Yeah, he just right. like doing homework. Yeah. You know that I told you about at the beginning of class how this last semester my online Java class had the lowest grades ever. Why had people cheating as always on their homework assignments? And these two people wouldn't let it die. I mean, there's one girl, nothing because it's not because she's a girl, but she turned her program that out of 80 lines of code, all but four were identical to on the web. She swore she did her, she goes, no, I did all that myself. I'm like, it's impossible to write 76 lines of code and be identical to someone else's. It's impossible. She wouldn't let it die, so I submitted an academic misconduct paper on her. Then another guy did the same thing. I was like, jeez. So, but assuming that one that's highlighted there didn't cheat, they might just suck at home or just not do homework. Okay? So what about grouping C down here? What could we get from grouping C? So they're, they're doing pretty decent on their homework. Because they, cheat. <laughs> because they cheat. They could be cheating off someone's homework. Or I hear it every time I give a test. So many people say, I really suck at taking tests. Because you, know, you got that timer. It's that whole, your heart rate hits about 220. You know, two years ago they did the, the indoor triathlon here at Rose State. We had to run a marathon. Do 115 miles on the bike and swim 2.4 miles in the pool. Did you do it? Yeah, I was the fifth one to finish. Everybody that finished before me was 21 and below. I was 49 at the time. But what got me, though, was swimming. I nearly drowned multiple times as a kid. My mom was blind, and I still remember the day she yanked me out of a pool. I don't know how she found me. But I, I have an issue swimming. So can you imagine my heart rate? During 2.4 miles of swimming, I swam right against the edge the whole time. Because every time my arm went up, I'd make sure I hit the edge. Just hit it so I knew it was there. Cause, but I wore a heart rate monitor. My heart rate was like 170 the entire time because I was so nervous. Well, C could very, very easily test anxiety. They do good on their homework. But when they sit down there with that clock ticking in the corner, like some of you probably have the same issue, they just freak out. So... I'm not saying it's false, just that's what it could be. But would we have known any of this? You know, so if I'm looking at this as real data, I say, you know, there's a very large group of people that, you know, hey, look, if you do your homework, you're going to get a good grade on the test. And if you don't do your homework, you're going to fail the test. So, you know, if I'm talking to brand new students, this would be a great way of using cluster analysis, looking at a large amount of data, 
to say, look, it's proven, do your homework. That's it. That's, that's what you get out of it. And is there any other clusters? I mean, there's really nothing happening in the middle here. I mean, any of this. There's really no, you know, nothing close. Okay. So that's just a, you know, and, you know, speaking of the, the program you're going to be working on, you know this earthquake data I just showed you here a second ago? Um, does anybody know where we're having a lot of earthquakes right now? Uh, well, yeah, in Chata, but where's, there's a, Jones has a bunch, it's actually just north of I-40, actually from Guthrie down to Jones in there, and a lot of people are saying it could be due to the fracking. Duh! <laughs> but there's actually a group out there that's saying they're trying to get them to stop fracking for one year to see if the earthquakes stop. Y'all know what fracking is, don't yeah, you? Yeah. They're fracturing the earth to get the natural gas out. What's even worse than that is they're actually taking the waste water and shoving it down into the earth, and that's what's causing the biggest issue. If you drive up by Kingfisher, between Kingfisher and Guthrie on that highway, whatever, there's one highway there, there's actually a public injection well. 77. Yeah, 77. You can go up there and take your waste whatever and dump it in this well, and they will literally inject it into the earth. I don't know about you, that kind of sucks. I mean, I drink water that comes from under the ground. <laughs> exactly. It's like uh, there's a movie out there called Gaslands, G A S L A N D S, one and two. There's actually two of them, which is all about how fracking is causing issues, and it's like wow. But uh, yeah, it was crazy. But I like the fact that our gas is like two dollars and sixty-five cents a gallon. No. Who actually buys gas? Oh, what you guys do. I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting that. Uh, yeah, it is cheaper. That's a lot better than $4 a gallon. Yes, it is. So, but, but just having the data and doing something with it is very beneficial. Okay. And like I said, we have a new person, brand new position on campus, started within the last year. Her job is just to look at the data of the school. Because people are saying, hey, you know, you got it. You might as well do something with it. Uh, but one aspect they don't talk about in here at all is the security of the data. I mean, if you got all this data, can you imagine the school's analyzing it if someone's been tampering with it? That would kind of suck. So keeping you secure is another issue. Okay. So there's a little bit about the cluster stuff. Okay. So implementing on simple data, you can take a table of scores. Where I'm not going to walk through their examples here because none of them are complete. They talk about the Euclidean distances, and they're going to use the uh, quadratic or the Pythagorean formula to determine the distances between them. And what they're doing is finding between two points, you know, what is the distance, so you can compare each point to each point. Okay. As I stated since like chapter two, I'm not going to do all the math stuff because this is not an engineering Python class. But I still, you know, we're still going to use the data. We're just we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. And here's the Euclidean formula that they actually use to determine the distance between the point and do stuff with it, okay? Um, yeah, again, we're not going to walk through that. Okay. So let's continue on. Again, I'm not walking through all the math stuff, okay? And that's what they're talking about, the averaging of the points. Okay. All right. Then iterations. Now... This stuff here, they, they start going over this, and we're actually going to need some of this when we get into our next program. I'm just going to write this here real quick. I'm going to type what they have here. For num n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, colon, always forget the colon, print. So what's that going to do? Anybody? Print hello. Okay, now, could I have it, could I say, hello one, hello two, hello three? How can I do that? Plus what? Oh. Like that? That way there's a space? Is that going to work, though? Oh, I keep... String, it is an int. We need to convert it to a string. 
That's what it's telling us. Can't convert in. So how do I convert this to a string? STR? Okay. So it's very easy to iterate through loops and stuff like that. Okay. Then they start talking about the while loop. Did we cover while loop in here at all? I think we did. Okay. While loop is pretty handy. Like for this earthquake data, you're going to have to read it all in into this big dictionary and then do something based on the data. You're going to be asking me different questions and we're going to query for different stuff. Okay. Um, let me go on to the next file. We need part two. All right, so, and we can also accumulate something here. I'm going to type this one in, just because a, a real big deal with data mining is you need to get averages. You need to be able to look for, like, how many earthquakes were around this location, that kind of stuff. And here what they're doing is they're coming up with an accumulator for ANOM in range 1, 11, total equals total plus a num. You actually did one of these on your test. So what is this doing? Anybody? What's well, starting at one and going all the way up to one? Right. Well, it's, it's adding them up. So it's one plus two plus three, so on and so forth up to ten. So, so you need to know how to use accumulators, which again will be in your next program. All right, so they're adding up the numbers between 1 and 10. Add each of them to the accumulator called total. Because data is one thing, but you need the results of the data. You need the totals. You need the statistical type stuff out of it. Okay? All right, and I think that's where I want to stop for now because um, I, I don't have the, the rest of your program going yet. But here... They're collecting the tonal, and then they're going to initialize something. That's not a big issue, but you can change where your loop starts with. Uh, but I want to pick up at this point on 246 next time. I just have to get that next part of your program written so I know exactly which way I want to go with this. So I know we barely touched on Chapter 7, but everybody okay so far? At least you know what the heck data analysis is. Um, I'll put the data file up there so y'all can start playing with it if you want to. Actually, I'll put it up there right now. That way, in case anybody wants to do anything with it. It might be modified slightly. If it is, I will update it. And do you guys get notification every time I change something on D2L? Don't you? Doesn't it tell you something's been added or... It doesn't? I thought it did. All right, so let me add it in here. Now, I had to look because I thought... Someone said that you guys should be getting notifications anytime I make a change. We didn't get a, notif a notification about the grades on the test. Oh, you did? No, no we didn't. Hmm. So I kept like when, our, when the quiz gets graded, it yeah. doesn't say it's graded. All right, I'll have to so look. Have to go into submissions and but did you get notified when we put these files up yesterday? Uh -uh. All right, because there should be some way you guys are getting notified. But I'll look into that. But that's most likely... The the data file we're going to use for this program. Okay, so we're going to pick up on 246 next time. We're almost out of time anyway.